13.72 billion years. The universe is huge and old, and rare things happen all the time, including life. You don't need a deity. You have nothing, zero total energy, and quantum fluctuations can produce a universe. The really important stuff in the universe is not the stars and galaxies, but the stuff you can't see, the mysterious stuff that dominates nature. It's between the galaxies. It's where nothing is shining. About 50 times as much mass in this system, and in all systems we can measure, comes from stuff that doesn't shine. And physicists, with their linguistic perspicacity, have called it dark matter. Nothing is really a boiling, bubbling brew of virtual particles that are popping in and out of existence in a time scale so short you can't see them. This is the space inside of a proton. These fields popping in and out of existence produce about 90% of the mass of a proton. Knowing the answer means nothing. Testing your knowledge means everything. And so the question is, we should test what the energy of empty space is. And how can we do that? Well, we weigh the universe. How do we do that? We stand on the shoulders of giants. Einstein told us that a mass will curve space around it. And he realized, therefore, if you had a big enough mass, and you have a source of light behind that mass, the light can bend around that object and come back and be magnified, just like my glasses magnify. The universe can be a one of three different geometries, open, closed, or flat. The universe must be flat. Why? It's the only mathematically beautiful universe. It turns out that in a flat universe, the total energy is precisely zero. Only such a universe can begin from nothing. Everything we see, stars and galaxies and clusters, if you get rid of it, the universe is essentially the same. We constitute a 1% bit of pollution in a universe that's 30% dark matter and 70% dark energy. And that is remarkable. 